Okay, let's go deeper now into the adrenal gland. We're going to head down into the adrenal medulla and talk about what's happening there. And uh, some of this is going to be uh, a review from Biology 201 when he learned about the autonomic nervous system and the fight or flight responses of the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. Um, if you don't remember that, you might want to um, take a quick look back at that because uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems will be coming up pretty frequently throughout the course. We'll hear about those in almost every unit. All right, so the adrenal medulla is, again, that's the central portion of the medulla down in here, that nice juicy center. And you have cells in there that are called uh, medullary chromaffin cells, are the names, chromaffin or chromaffin cells. And uh, those cells produce catecholamines. And you may have heard that term in Biology 201, maybe not, but catecholamines, that's a catch-all term for epinephrine and norepinephrine. Of course, that's abbreviated epi, norepinephrine, sometimes called norepi. Um, it can abbre be abbreviated as NE. You'll see those different designations. So those cells produce uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, and they're showing you there about 80% of the catecholamines they produce are in the epinephrine form and about 20% of the norepi form. And the name for these that may be more familiar to you, adrenaline and um, noradrenaline. So epinephrine is also known as, and I see my stylus is not going to cooperate with me here. Adrenaline. I promise my handwriting is not as bad <laughs> as it shows up on these videos. I'm writing on an iPad and then that projects onto the screen so it doesn't always come out very pretty. All right, so when you have an adrenaline rush, um, that's coming from your sympathetic nervous system, but um, also from the adrenal medulla. The difference is that the sympathetic nervous system produces norepinephrine um, very quickly, almost instantaneously, and it does it due to, you know, when you're in a fight or flight type situation, like short-term stress, you're having to deal with some sort of short-term stressful scenario or your brain thinks that you're stressed like I got to give a speech in class you know that kind of can be emotional stress as well the sympathetic nervous system secretes norepinephrine to help you um, get ready for that and then there are branches of the sympathetic nervous system that extend down in here into the adrenal medulla and when they secrete neurotransmitters, those neurotransmitters bind to those chromaffin cells in the adrenal medulla, and that stimulates them to produce epi and norepi. So it's kind of like the sympathetic nervous system is doing it short term. The adrenal medulla takes a little longer to start making these chemicals, but the adrenal medulla is going to produce them in greater amounts, and they're going to get into the bloodstream and um, last longer. The effects are going to last longer once the adrenal, adrenal medulla starts making these. Because remember your nervous system produces things, those neurons, they secrete chemicals locally, you know, out of those little synaptic knobs at the ends of the axons, and then they just float across synapses and do their things locally. When the adrenal, adrenal medulla releases these chemicals that are involved, involved in stimulating these fight or flight type responses, they're going to spread throughout your whole body. They're not going to act locally. They're going to be acting everywhere. So they're going to kind of help you sustain stress responses. What are the effects? They're going to be similar to things that you learned about in Biology 201 when you covered the sympathetic nervous system. So vasoconstriction, so we've already been talking about that, causes blood vessels to constrict. And one of the reasons that happens, or the main reason that happens, is it increases your blood pressure when that happens. Um, why do we need to increase blood pressure? So this is one of those really good exercises where you can think about physiology and how one step leads to another and why are these things happening. Uh, you're increasing your blood pressure because your blood pressure does what? It delivers oxygen gas and nutrients to your tissues. It carries away 
wastes, if you increase blood pressure, those things are going to happen more quickly. The blood's going to flow more quickly throughout the body. If you're in a flight, fight or flight situation, like you're running away from an attacker, um, something like that, um, your cells have to metabolize more quickly to help you get through that. So you need increased blood flow to deliver more oxygen gas, more nutrients. Those cells are more metabolically active. They're going to be producing more wastes from their metabolism. Those wastes have to be carted away from your tissues. Um, otherwise, they would build up and become toxic. So, uh, you know, that's why your blood pressure has to go up, um, some of the key reasons. Your heart rate goes up basically for the same reasons. You got to keep the blood pumping faster and faster and faster to your tissues to make sure they're getting uh, the blood flow that they need. Blood glucose levels go up. Now, we saw that with cortisol as well. Cortisol is also involved in stress. And uh, same deal here. If you are dealing with a stressful situation, you got to have more glucose, gl glucose, glucose in your bloodstream to supply the cells that need that for energy. A lot of things in physiology go back to this, you know, who needs energy and how much do we need more energy? Do we need less? Are we doing more metabolism? Are we, are we do, uh, doing less? A lot of things get traced back to that. A lot of things get traced back to osmosis. Those are two really key things you got to keep, always keep in mind when you're trying to think about physiological explanations for why and how things happen in the body. Uh, your blood flow tends to get diverted when you're in a stressful situation to the brain, the heart, and your skeletal muscles, which means you're going to have less blood flow to the skin, to the surface. Uh, you're going to conserve blood deeper in the body for vital organs. That makes sense if you're in a stressful situation. Um, you got to protect those vital organs that you need to survive. Skeletal muscles, uh, you need good blood flow to your skeletal muscles because if you're in survival mode, um, an alien has landed in your yard and is coming to kill you, you've got to run away. So your skeletal muscles have got to have lots of oxygen gas and glucose so they can do cellular respiration and make that happen. Uh, your bronchi in your lungs, your air passages tend to dilate. And why would they do that? We want more O2 coming in. If your bronchi dilate, you got more incoming airflow. Also, it helps, what are we breathing out? CO2. You're getting rid of CO2. So it helps you expel the extra CO2 your body is producing as a result of cellular respiration. Remember, CO2 is a waste product of cellular respiration. All right. Y'all are probably going to get sick of me talking about some of these things. I always harp on because I really want you guys to try to learn and understand how and why things happen in the body and uh, the rationale and the reasonings behind that. So I'm probably going to be repeating myself a lot because I try to drill these concepts in. Once you get into that mode, it's a whole lot easier to learn and understand how things happen in the body. All right, so what happens if you are a hyper secretor of adrenal medulla hormones, those catecholamines? Um, some of these will not be a surprise. Hyperglycemia. Uh, what does that term mean? High blood sugar, high glucose. Hyperglycemia. Makes sense because we said these hormones increase glucose levels in the bloodstream so that glucose can be supplied to tissues that, must, that absolutely require it. Um, metabolic rate goes up. Your metabolism goes up. Uh, and it'll be too high if you are overproducing the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, that makes sense because those hormones stimulate increased metabolism to help you deal with fight or flight type situations. Not surprisingly, your heart will beat too quickly. You might experience heart palpitations. Um, you may feel nervous from overproduction of these hormones. Um, hypertension, your blood pressure will probably be too high. It'll go above normal, out of normal homeostatic ranges. And um, sweating, you know, why would you be sweating? We can think along, think about that. Why are you sweating? Sweating helps you keep your body cooler, 
Well, guess what? If you have increased metabolism going on in your body due to overproduction of these hormones, um, that means you've got increased cellular respiration is taking place. And one of the byproducts of cellular respiration, if you guys remember, heat. When you break down nutrients like glucose during cellular respiration, you're breaking chemical bonds. You're trying to harness the energy that was stored in those nutrients to make ATP, but some of that stored energy gets lost in the form of heat. That's why you overheat when you exercise. So if you're a hyper secretor of adrenal medulla hormones, a lot of your symptoms are almost going to be like your, uh, what happens when you're exercising really hard. You overheat, your body's response to overheating is to trigger sweating to help cool the body off. So that makes sense when we kind of rationalize our way through it. All right, hyposecretion, um, if you underproduce hormones made by the adrenal medulla, uh, doesn't seem to be associated with any uh, major problems. So these adrenal catecholamines are not considered to be essential to life. Now notice they're saying adrenal. That doesn't mean you can get by without your sympathetic nervous system that makes um, norepinephrine locally in local areas of the body. But uh, apparently if your adrenal medulla in both of your adrenal glands shuts down, you can get by without the extra ones that the adrenal glands produce. But I'm sure you're not as good at dealing with fight or flight situations. So if Sasquatch showed up in your living room and your adrenal medulla was not working very well, you probably wouldn't be as good at getting away from Sasquatch before he captured you. Just something to keep in mind if you think you might have that problem. All right, I like this next diagram from your textbook because we've been talking quite a bit about stressful type situations and the different hormones that are involved. And um, uh, so just to kind of review, and it also... Uh, refers back to the good old hypothalamus up in the brain, this master of the master that controls so many things that happen in the body. So what we're taking a look at here, there's a difference between what happens in the body with short-term stress and prolonged stress, even though a lot of the, um, the symptoms or the effects uh, are, are pretty similar. So if your body is experiencing stress, uh, the brain realizes that, sends signals down here to the hypothalamus, and you have neurons in the hypothalamus whose job it is to respond to stress. If you're experiencing short-term stress, um, like you got to give a speech in speech class, um, or an axe murder has shown up in your driveway, uh, neurons, there are neurons in the hypothalamus that deal with that, and they trigger signaling of the sympathetic nervous system. That's what you're seeing here. They're showing you that there are nerve fibers of the sympathetic nervous system that extend down here into the adrenal medulla. And they signal the chromaffin cells in there to produce epinephrine and norepinephrine. Those chemicals travel throughout the body and they trigger all of these various things that we were just talking about. Um, increased glucose levels, your bronchial passages dilate, blood pressure goes up. Um, uh, notice uh, digestive system activity and urine output goes down. The sympathetic nervous system dials down both digestion and urine output. Um, and the reason for that helps you conserve body fluids and helps divert blood flow away from your digestive tract to more vital areas of the body while you're trying to deal with a short-term stress situation. Metabolism goes up. Now with more prolonged stress, you have neurons in the hypothalamus that respond to that by secreting CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone. Uh, that travels down the infundibulum through those capillaries in there that we talked about to the anterior pituitary, and you have cells in the anterior pituitary whose job it is to secrete ACTH. ACTH travels um, to the adrenal throughout the body, but its target is in the, or its targets are in the adrenal cortex. 
and it stimulates secretion of glucocorticoids like cortisol and to a lesser degree the mineralocorticoids especially aldosterone is the main one that we talked about so with longer periods of stress you're going to experience the effects of cortisol and aldosterone so those things that we talked about on the last video clip aldosterone you keep uh, secreting that um, at levels that are higher than normal for a long period of time it's going to do things like raise your blood volume and blood pressure um, cortisol increased for long periods of time um, due to long-term stress bl blood glucose glucose levels tend to stay too high the fatty levels in your blood stay too high like we talked about on the last video clip uh, the immune system becomes suppressed you've probably heard before that uh, if you get stressed you're more likely to get sick and you know some people think that's an old wives tale but it's actually not because uh, when you're dealing with a, a longer period of stress like if you were trapped outside in the cold you know for a couple of days or something and didn't have adequate shelter yes you're producing cortisol to help you get through that stressful situation and that is suppressing your immune system that is a, um, a one of the effects that cortisol has even though in, in some ways that seems counterintuitive to what uh, probably should be happening in the body so that is one of the reasons why you're more likely to get sick and we talked about how uh, American lifestyle today a lot of us seem to be running around with elevated levels of cortisol and um, you know a lot of people seem to be kind of prone to getting sick a lot and, and one of the reasons could be that your cortisol levels are elevated too much of the time all right sorry to be so chit chatty the endocrine system is pretty fascinating when you start thinking about all these different disorders um, and uh, things that happen in the body as a result of, of these little chemical signaling molecules they really do have incredible effects on the body okay so uh, the next video is we're done with the adrenal glands and for the next one uh, the next video lecture we're going to move on to the pancreas and uh, the pancreas is the location where insulin is made and of course we hear a lot about insulin all the time so this is going to be a pretty important video lecture where as you may guess we're going to start talking about diabetes as well